irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to LA Talk Radio. You're listening to Question Reality with Priscilla Leona, right here on LA Talk Radio. Welcome to Question Reality. I'm your host, Priscilla Leona, and we are coming to you live from Los Angeles, California. If this is your first time tuning in, our show will help you to question your career reality. Now, this show is for you if you are considering a career in the entertainment industry. And our guests will provide advice on how and what it takes to successfully pursue a career in the entertainment industry. Some of our guests include Emmy winners, Grammy winners, Tony winners, Tony Wenders. Oh, you think I had a cocktail? Wild turkey before it came on. Here we go, people. Reality television stars, producers, directors, actors, singers, casting directors, talent agents, talent managers, screenwriters, novelists, and the list goes on and on. You get the idea. If they are working professionally in show business, we are going to have them on the show to give you entertainment career advice. And we make sure that our guests are at various stages of their careers from different professions, uh, from beginners to professionals. Professionals, and that means that we will definitely have someone on the show who will be able to answer all of your show business career questions. Now, you can listen to any of our past shows by going to our archive page on the LA Talk Radio website. Just go to Channel One. There's a drop down menu, and you click Question Reality, and this takes you directly to our archive page. And our shows are also available for download on iTunes under the podcast section and on Stitcher.com, the new hot sweeping website for uh, internet radio. It's the hottest thing. Uh, just go to their websites, type in Question Reality Radio in the search box, and there you go. We are there. Now, if you want to find out about our future guests, as you know, we're booked six months to a year in advance. We are so popular over here. Uh, you have to go to our official Question Reality website. Uh, that is questionrealityradioshow.com. And I encourage you to check out all of the other shows here on LA Talk Radio. Uh, they have informative topics, and uh, you want if you. You want to know about psychology? There's a psychologist on the couch with Dr. Michelle. She's going to help you out. If you have any sort of problems, there's someone to help you on this radio station. And you can download our free app for your Android or iPhone and be able to listen to all of those shows on our homepage. So go to latalkradio.com, and it is located at the bottom. Woo! You know, when I announced this guest was coming on, there was an influx from the actors all over the globe uh, to ask questions, and I got lots of questions, and thank goodness, uh, because I wrote some of them down, uh, so some of them will be asked, and I will announce your name, just your first name, uh, but we also have two host, co-host, one has been here before, uh, we are, we have, now wait a minute, before, before we go on, let me tell you who, I'm so excited, I forgot to tell you who the hell the guest was today, okay, it's Ty Harmon, uh, Ty Harmon has worked in various assets of uh, entertainment, or facets, assets, mm, cocktail, uh, in his entire career. Now, he started in the business as an actor, and he transitioned behind the scenes as a development executive for Kim Basinger's Mighty Wind Productions. And Ty had the opportunity to learn the talent agency business from the legendary Ed Lamato and become a talent agent at ICM. And then he was looking to be more creative, so he went on his next endeavor uh, and became a casting executive at the Fox Network, working on some of my favorite shows, 90210, Melrose Place, Allie McBeal, and The X-Files. And Ty has also been a casting executive at Universal Television and TNT. And as an independent casting director, Ty has worked on the American Pie franchise. Oh, one of my favorite. Uh, HBO's Generation Kill and the television series Warehouse 13 
Alpha, Shake It Up, The Game, Girlfriends. And his credit list just went for 181 pages. I said, to hell with this. I got them all, all the ones I like. I'm just putting them down. But he has a ton of credits. So we are going to have him today. And we have two co-hosts here to rep you actors. They are here to ask the hard-hitting questions from Ty. Uh, We have our returning co-host and our favorite ginger from across the pond, Mr. Ben Patton. Ben is a stand-up comedian and host, screenwriter, producer, and actor. BenPatton.net. Why you have net, I don't know. Does anyone still have a .net? I don't know. Uh, I guess you, Ben. And we have our Too Sexy for Her Shirt co-host and guest from last week, Alexa Fair. She is an R&B pop artist, dancer, and actress. And her latest single, Saved a Boyfriend, is available for download on SoundCloud. And you can check out her website, AlexaFairMusic.com. That's F-E-R-R. Short for, was it Ferragamo? No, that's, I think that's my perfume I put on today. Uh, AlexaFair.com. We have to change that, Ben. You need a dot com. Now, these co-hosts are going to be asking a couple of questions from the actor's perspective on this scary subject of casting directors. Ooh, they're so scared. The actors are so scared of the casting director. Why well, I don't know, because they're your friend. They're your best friend. If, you, if they want to book you, a lot of actors, they go on auditions. And they're so scared of these casting people. But you got to remember, they want to cast you. The sooner they cast you, the sooner they can go home and get a damn cocktail. They just want to cast the show. So don't be afraid of them. They are your friends. Oh, I actually wrote some notes on it. Casting directors are your advocates and are your champions. Are you not a champion, Ty? That is very true. Mm -hmm. And your work reflects on them. So your wonderful work that you do when they cast you makes them look good. So they they want you to do the very, very best. Now, on the flip side, disconnected, tentative, muddled work does nothing for anyone. Does it not, Ty? No, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Now, they need you to be great, so you got to come in prepared. Don't think that you you come here off the Greyhound bus with your $50 damn dollars in your pocket and you head beeline for a casting director and somehow you get in via the casting couch or however the hell you get in. But if you're not prepared, it's not going to go well, people. It's not going well. Now, casting directors are there they're to host your experience, and they shepherd you. Do you not feel like a shepherd? Well, that's why we're called so, casting directors. That's right. Because we help to shape their performance. Exactly. You're shepherding them in. And shepherding? Not, shepherd, I can't, shepherding? I, wild turkey. Third cocktail. No. They're sh- what, is there a word? Shepherding? What, what shepherding. Would you you I think would shepherding. Just, I mean, admittedly, this English is, is American English. Oh, is look. We got language. somebody <laughs> from England. The motherland. He's going to correct me on the English. All right. Shepherd. They're going to shepherd you in. They don't want to hold you back. Right? And they want to share in your excellent work, right? Because if you look good, they look good. Mm -mm -mm. Now, casting directors await you on the other side of the door, and that door can be seen as either a gateway or a barricade. Am I right? Ty? I guess that's a way to look at it. Mm-hmm. When, while most beginning actors turn the audition into a horror scenario, now I wrote this. I wrote it, so I'm going to say it. I wrote this just for Ty. So I'm getting it out. I wrote this just for him. So, but it's true. A lot of actors, they, oh, you know, the audition, they turn into this horror scene in their head, which it really doesn't need to be. You need to think about it more as your personal little stage, not a torture chamber. I think that's a good advice. Good way, right. And whether it's a pre-read for an associate or a full-blown casting director, producer, callback, this is your time, your experience, and this is the opportunity to do exceptional work. So, um, So let's start with Ty. Keeping that in mind, in your opinion, what are... The th- oh, by the way, welcome to Question Reality. Oh, Ty, I did it again, did I not, Ben? But I introduced you to. Right? You got there. You didn't I got forget. there. I got there. You got 90% of the Now, wait a minute, Albert, you have to do my special applause. You oh, know yeah. that Ty gets the special oh, yeah. applause. I got that just for Ty. Oh, exciting. And we want to welcome Ty Harmon. Woo! <laughs> 
corny, yes, but Ty needed that today. <laughs> Ty needed the applause today. I wanted to give it to Ty. He deserves it. Um, so let's start with our first question. In your opinion, Ty, what are three of the absolute worst things you can do as an actor to jeopardize your career? No training. Mm -hmm. Only act when you're auditioning. That is so true. If you're an actor, are you not supposed to act Actors all day act. and all night? How can you be an actor? You just turn it on. But, oh, I'm so glad you said that. Now, in what context do you mean that? Do you mean, like, you're acting in the audition and then when you actually, if you get cast in they're something not in, or not? They're not in class regularly. They're okay. not involved in the local theater scene. Yeah. The only time they act is when they come into audition, which okay. is, it's like running a race in the Olympics having never trained for that race. You that have to be sense. sharp. You have to keep those muscles sharp. I just say act all day. 24 hours. The moment you hit up, just act. <laughs> what the hell? People say you're crazy, but it's all right. It's all right. Nothing wrong with you're a little self-delusion. Yeah, that's right. right. Nothing wrong with Become that. i a different character yeah. every single day. Exactly. <laughs> For example, I've managed to convince a room full of people on a radio show that I'm from England. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I one of the things I love is people who change up their outfits. Like, they can wear a 1950s outfit and rock it and then a 60s outfit. Why can't you be a different character every day? Mm -hmm. You could actually go to the doctor and get free day of medication for this, right? And you're just an actor. Um, they, that should be one of the questions on a health questionnaire before they're giving you pills. Are you an actor? Because right? you could be <laughs> acting crazy to get that hydrocodone. All right, so uh, we did two. What's the third one? Have lousy headshots. <gasps> Whoa. Oh, you know, that's a good one. A bad headshot Ty, can kill uh, That's can a kill good a one. Ty, I was rock. Now, I love to do background work because Lord knows I am not memorizing shit. I am not <laughs> doing it. Don't. But I loved being in background. I have lots of uh, friends who are casting directors and producers and directors. And when they needed a fluffy person, I'm fluffy, they would call me up and they'd say, oh, you know, can you be a background person? I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. Um, and uh, now I forgot what the hell I was talking about. What the hell was I talking about? Um, we were talking about headshots. Oh, headshots. Yes. Thank you, Ben. Ben, thank you. Glad one uh, of us is on the ball here uh, today. Ty, I was rocking the black and white headshot <laughs> up nice. until last year. And do you know I was getting called right and left to do background acting? They don't care, I guess, you know, with background actors. But um, I just recently went to color, reluctantly, because, you know, color shows everything. It's going to show. You got pores the size of a Hawaiian volcano. It's going to show. <laughs> but what uh, I have found that a lot of actors come to me and they say, Priscilla, I just spent a fortune getting headshots. And my agent says they're not good enough. They want me to go to this person, that person. Now, that might be a scam because, you know, they get some kickbacks. Sure. How do you, you know, talk us through that? I, th I think you have to... Question your peer group, see who has good headshots that you really like and respond to, and see who their photographer is. Right. I think that's the best way by word of mouth. And now, I am one for, you shouldn't be photoshopping, but a lot of people do it. But if they come in, like my friend, she uses her headshot from when she was in the John Travolta Let's Get Physical video, no, Living Newton John, and mm -hmm. she sends it out. I'm like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. But uh, she photoshops it up. Well, your, your headshot should look like you look on the day you're going to come into the office. Right. Otherwise, you see us looking at the headshot, looking at you, looking <laughs> yeah. at the headshot, looking at you, and yeah. thinking this is not even the same person. Right. And then you go, good job, thanks. Bye. So in an ideal universe, you want to be getting headshots taken, like, maybe every six months? Mm, it, I mean, it depends how quickly you're aging, <laughs> you know? If you're just rapidly, if you're deteriorating like you've just looked into the Ark of the Covenant, then yeah, you should probably... I think yeah. once a year is probably... Yeah. 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 And if you good. change your hair, like, I change my hair frequently, yeah. Yeah. red to blonde, and... I keep them on file if you change your hair frequently because you might be able to use them. I can rock a, a headshot for 10 years because I'm Irish and I just stay looking the same. But You can uh, keep telling yourself that. That's fine. That's good. Yes, I do. <laughs> I, I am do. not being invited I back on I tell show. myself that. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and but now a big thing is with cost. You know, what do you think a, a headshot should cost? I, some people are paying like a 1000 and something. I month. think you can get a good quality headshot for $500. 
Yeah. With a reputable photographer. All right. Now, do you recommend all these crazy backgrounds? You know, there are some headshots where they blow you up. Uh, they, uh, it almost looks like you're in a in a scene from Avatar. No, it's about you. Know, have you, you. seen those headshots yeah. where they're Brain. really neon-y? I just I want to see something from the chest up. We want to see your face. That's what we're interested in seeing. Okay. Something that's clean that looks like you today. Right. And let's talk about branding. A lot of people don't know their brand. They come in, they look like Opie, but yet they're thinking that they are, you know, the next, uh, who's a hot, uh, Brad Pitt. They think they're Brad Pitt, but they, they're the boy next door. Mm -hmm. So branding. Well, I think you have to realize that, I mean, my hope is always that actors can play anything, you know, from a homeless Mm. person to the president of the United States. Mm. So I don't know that you have to be quite so concerned um, with a brand, per se. With the headshots. Yeah, but I want... uh, if, you, if you're a character actor and you look charactery, then yeah, you're probably not going to get those leading man roles. Good. What Are would you, you say looks charactery? Just for well, context. Well, you look charactery. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am just for context wearing a very brightly colored, like Marvel Avengers yes. vest right now. Yes. So I do look like I fell out of a, like a cartoon. Comic Con. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, God, don't say the Comic-Con word. I just had the experience from hell at Comic-Con, which I'm sure you had the best time. Oh, I had time. a great time. I had a fantastic I bought this vest. You, on the other hand. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> Lord, how mercy. I was so excited when I was approved, along with the 14 billion people that I saw there, I approved, too. But uh, Albert and I had never gone, so we said, oh, Comic-Con, Comic-Con. We drove down there, and there were so many people, and it was grid light lock traffic, and we said, hell no. I said, I'm hungry. Let's go to Olive Garden. So uh, (laughs) we paid $220 for his ticket, and we didn't even go to Comic-Con, which I'm sure you had a good time. You had a good time, but no more Comic-Con for me. Mm -hmm. Mm. All right, so uh, next question. In your opinion, what are three of the best things you can do as an actor uh, that you think an actor can do to enhance their career? Make sure that you're constantly training. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you're constantly networking and developing relationships within the business. And that you're acting every day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like that. Uh, do you have a question for uh, Ty, Miss Alexa? Yes, I as do. An actually. <laughs> as an aspiring actress, aspiring actress, because you are an R and B pop artist, so you're transitioning. Of course. What do you look for um, at auditions? Well, we're looking what, for yeah. well prepared actors that have made like what, um, what stands interesting choices. Interesting choices, not okay. something that's straight down the middle. Okay. Something that's interesting outside the box that maybe you wouldn't usually um, predict for that piece of material. Right. Okay. Because sometimes uh, you can get sides, and it'll it'll be leaning towards a certain character. But I hope Ty does. Ty can join in on that. But I say, you know what? If you feel you know that the character is something else don't be afraid to not to maybe change the character up because sometimes the writers don't know they're looking for a character and you come in and you do a character and they're like that's what i really want and they'll change it well, so i'd much rather see you make choices. a very strong choice and yeah, carry it throughout choice. even if it's the wrong choice at least i know strong, that you can make right, a strong yeah. choice and, and carry it throughout it the scene and then we can give you notes saying okay here's some additional information that maybe you don't know let's try this and this and this right. and then go through the material right. an additional time right as a, as an example of uh, of something along those lines there was a british sitcom it's actually um uh, Simon Pegg and Edgar Wright did back in 1999 called Spaced. And one of the characters, his name is Brian, he's an artist, and they'd originally written him as kind of uh, flamboyant, like kind of big on the page. And then an actor named Mark Heap came in and gave this very kind of quiet, very uh, just kind of focused take on the role, and that's who they ended up casting. Mm. They went completely, wow, almost sure. in the opposite direction, and it works. It worked mm-hmm. really, really well. Cool. That is exactly what I was talking about. Now, Ty, what is the biggest challenge most actors face in making it in the entertainment industry? I think just getting somebody to advocate for them and, and allow them to get into the room to audition to show their mm-hmm. talents and to show what a strong actor they are. And obviously they do this very with today there are workshops, which by the way, let's just get right into you have a workshop coming up. Did Where? you know that? I don't know. Ah! <laughs> Where is it? Well, one of the ways.
ways that you can get in front of an actor. Now, again, please, if you are a beginning actor, don't go roaming into a casting director workshop. Usually they audition to let you in, but sometimes they're open. Um, I've had casting director friends say, oh, my God, this person may have had one acting lesson and Mm -hmm. you don't want to do that because you know cast directors remember you they remember Mm -hmm. you and if you do that that says you're one disrespectful two you don't know the business side and you need to know that it's not it's called show business but ty Harmon's next workshop is going to be held for trulyacting.com and it is a ty Harmon workshop full casting director with Guthrie Goddard Casting, Tuesday, August 4th at 7.30 p.m. at Actors Creative Workshop, 2705 West Olive Street in Burbank. You can go to the website, trulyacting.com. And now Ty knows what he's doing on August in 4th. August. <laughs> in August, which is coming up. That's your next one. I didn't I didn't see anything about anything before that. All right. Is there something coming up before that, or are you just... In Boca he's Raton just shocked. until he's just then. Shocked that he's no, I've been I've been traveling a lot. I teach all over the country, and in the last three weeks, I've been in New York, and I just got back from St. Louis yesterday, and I go to Dallas on Friday. So I'm just. Do you have to... someone booking you, or you do your own stuff? I do my own. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Handling your business time. There you go. All up in it. Got to. Now you originally started <laughs> out as an actor. I did a hundred years ago. You did. Now, why did you transition into a career as a casting director? Because I would have thought, you know, you're handsome. You could have done oh, like, you. you know, you could have done the actor scene. Did you? Not I just wanted it? different things out of life, and it's it's so incredibly competitive, and your chances of making it and making a living at it are tough. You know, the Screen Actors Guild membership less than two percent makes their living as actors with insurance. Right. That means ninety eight point something percent have to do something else in addition to whatever monies they may or may not make as actors. They have to have other jobs or other sources of income just to survive. Right. I didn't like those odds. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's tricky. You've got to really want it. And even then, the thing is, that, oh, you've just got to want it. That's not enough. No, you've got to be able mm-hmm. to do yeah. it. <laughs> yes. Everybody watches television and they think, oh, I, I don't do know that. what he's getting paid for. I could do that, but it's right. totally different. People say that about singers, too. Singing, sure. right. So uh, American Idol. Well. Yep. <laughs> my, my friend Michael <laughs> Orland is uh, one of the, is, I think he's associate music producer over at American Idol, mm-hmm. and he's like, everybody thinks they can sing until they come to an audition, and even though experts are telling them, Jennifer Lopez, you can't sing, mm-hmm. they still think they can sing. Of course. Same with actors. Yeah. There needs to be a show like American Idol, but just for actors, where they get up in the audition, and then you're told that you can't act. And I want to see breakdowns, meltdowns. I, think that <laughs> I want to see an all. interesting show. So, that's right. Um, now, there are hundreds of casting director workshops in L.A. Uh, what is the perfect casting director workshop from the actor and casting director perspective? Like... I know that acting direct uh, actors have told you this is what I want, mm-hmm. and then what do you think a work casting workshop would be? That's the perfect one. What is an actor going to get? Oh, I think there's a lot of give and take, and I think we're going to learn from each other. I, my hope is always that actors are going to learn from me, and I'm going to learn from them. It usually starts out with you know a basic question and answer session where they can I introduce myself and and talk about the shows maybe that I'm currently working on. And then uh, they have the opportunity to ask any questions about the business. There's so much bad information out there that, you know, I think it's really important for us as casting directors to try to dispel all those myths um, that actors have about the casting process. From there, it goes one of two ways. Either they, the actors will do prepared scenes with a reader or we'll hand out material and pair people up and do cold reads. I prefer prepared material personally. Mm-hmm. I think it gives the actor a better chance to shine. And, and from hearing all of those things you just talked about, what do you feel um, are most of these myths out there that you want to dispel that it's going into a casting office is like fi- facing a firing squad that we're there just to judge and to say show me what you got mm-hmm. and the reality is we want you to be great we hope that you are great if you are great and no one's ever heard of you and you book on one of my shows and then go on to have a career I will take credit for that yes <laughs> well <laughs> time. of course yes, it's a win win for everyone absolutely uh, now what are so these casting director workshops how do you fit them in because Obviously, you're busy. You're we one do them of the... at night and on the weekends. Okay, and when and time allows. Do uh, 
is when you have these casting director workshops, do you sometimes find talent, like untapped talent, or is it... Sure. Do you, what oh, do you course. do? You, you see a, a, a variety of skill levels, you know? I mean, casting directors in the state of California are for educational purposes only, per the Kokorian Law. But um, I can tell you that we are, you know, constantly looking. If I see somebody that really impresses me, I'm going to bring them in for an audition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to do the disclaimer right. in the beginning of the class. Don't want to go to casting director jail. No, no. <laughs> Is that any different than regular jail? I, mean, do have, do I don't know. I don't want to find out. <laughs> uh, now, what are, let's talk about that. What are some of your current projects? that you're working on? Uh, right now we do a Zendaya show on the Disney Channel, which is called Casey Undercover. Uh, we also do Live and Maddie, which is another Disney Channel show. We do a show for Nickelodeon that hasn't started to air yet, which is called School of Rock, which is the series adaptation of the Jack Black movie. Mm. And we're also doing another new series for uh, Nickelodeon called Homeroom. Mm. Now, what if, if people wanted to get in front of you to do their thing, do their little acting thing, mm -hmm. what, would they come to one of your casting director workshops or do you accept... Uh, submissions? Do they do that anymore? Where they send unsolicited the, you know, the submissions are yeah. really tough to get to because of the volume of work that we have and the the amount mm -hmm. of time that we have to do it. So, what's the um, best way? Well, hopefully you have an agent or a manager that's going to submit you for something that you're right for. If you're unrepresented, then I think coming to a workshop is a good way to start to establish a relationship with a casting office. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are, the prices range out there. What do you think the average price an actor, because I, there was a beginning actor and he went to a casting director workshop, it was $80. And I'm like, I think that's I don't know what high. I don't know what they charge. That's, so the, it varies, I don't decide right? that. It, it I'm varies. sure it varies from place to place. Okay, so I we, don't know. we don't know. That was one of the questions. That was I from don't Linda have, from yeah. Arlington Arlington, Texas. Thank you, Linda. Um, so I don't set price points or anything like that. Those, that's the I'm an person. I'm an independent contractor right. to those particular venues, and they charge whatever they charge. So they call Ty up, and they say, hey, Mr. Harma, would you come and do a workshop? And uh, the person who holds the workshop, they're the ones that charge. Yeah, so because they're all, most of them are either for-profit businesses, or it's an actor's co-op where they're just trying to cover their costs. Got it. Yeah, so Ty has nothing to do with that. Don't be asking him how much you charge, or can I come over and I'll give you 50 bucks. Um, okay, <laughs> so an actor can find out about, um, are you with the uh, a casting director office, or are you still independent? I work independently, but I but I work with SGS mm -hmm. Casting, which is Suzanne Goddard Smythe, who's another casting director. Her, okay. it's her company. Okay, got it. And uh, Ben, do you have any award winning questions? Awards for winning. <laughs> yes. So Here you've go. talked about um, some of the things that can hurt an actor's career. Um, what can hurt an actor's chances in the audition? Like, what are the, what are some of the worst things that you see actually during an audition that <gasps> hurt that? That's a really I'm that so passion? glad you asked that, be and I'm gonna I'm jump in real quick. I have uh, one time um, I went to. Um, uh, a, a party and someone said oh I had the most horrible experience an actor she went to shake the casting director's hand mm -hmm. and he embarrassed her so bad in front of all these people and said how unprofessional I'm paraphrasing but how professional are you you never touch a casting director don't ever come up to us don't shake our hand don't touch us don't linger outside in the parking lot. Is it wrong to extend your hand? What is proper etiquette when you go into a It varies a office audition? to office and, and casting director to casting director. I don't mind that at all, but I know there are other people that don't want to be touched. Because if you're seeing, you know, 100 people a day and it's cold and flu season, mm, you know, your chances mm -hmm. of getting sick are pretty high. Right. So That makes some sense. So I don't think I don't think you could embarrass anyone. But, you, but yeah. So just don't reach your hand, your paw out. Just or say hi. Nice to meet you. Thanks yeah. for having me in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think that was kind wow. of a, a joke move on the part of that yeah, that, yeah, that was... That and how was, are you supposed to give a good audition after being yeah. slided exactly. like that in the room? Oh, that that's was terrible. So sorry. But, um, anyway, yes, yeah, so uh, actually during the audition process, what are some of the, the biggest mistakes that you see on a, on a regular basis? Actors get nervous and they get real chatty before the work. Mm -hmm. I've never seen an actor talk their way into a job, but I've seen a lot of actors talk their way out of a job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're there to do the work and to show what a great actor you are, so a, a simple hello, how are you, thanks for having me in, is plenty 
plenty. And Just let the let, work speak for itself. Yeah, and whoever's whoever's leading the room, which will usually be the casting director, let them lead the room, and they'll let you know when to go and what to do and how many times we're going to do the scene and, and any other notes that may be necessary or appropriate. Okay. Yeah, you don't need to. A lot of actors feel like they got to get in their personality, you know, oh, well, I'm going to be funny or I'm going to be this. That. No. Don't do that. It takes up time. Time is money. Okay. What, uh, starting out in a career as an actor, uh, for most people, it's financially challenging. Mm -hmm. And what advice can you give an actor on how to supplement their uh, income to, you know, any typical jobs that you've come across an actor that has that are not the waiter waitress? Anybody, any actor come up and they're like, I'm doing this. And you go, wow, really? I'm impressed. I hear things all the time. Like Actors what? have the craziest jobs. You know, they work for uh, the morgue or for, for a funeral Ooh. home, you know, and work at night. Um, oh. Lots of weird nighttime jobs. Oh, that's a good one. Never heard that one. There's a lot of Uber drivers now. Yeah, oh, sure. Absolutely. Oh, well, all Uber my Uber lift. drivers are actors, <laughs> casting directors, or someone like wow. producers. Yeah. Wow. I, yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, a guest on here was a, is an Uber driver. Um, yeah. That's very flexible. Mm-hmm. So jobs that have flexibility. That have flexibility. Yeah. Right. At the morgue, you say. Yeah. Ooh. I've never heard that. that. Crazy? You can run your lines and you have a person. That- <laughs> right. <laughs> a dedicated yeah, you audience. A, you you have a, a captive break. audience. <laughs> right. Oh, I love that. The problem is, if you're expecting a reaction, you just you know you're, you're never going to get it. <laughs> right. You hope. Yeah. Right. Well. Right. Now, do you have a, a question, Alexa, for Ty as a female actress? Yes, and actually, as a male. Actually, as so an, female related, male related. Well, it's it's more general. Okay. For any up and coming actors, um, how important is an actor's experience when auditioning for a role compared to others that have more experience? I think it comes into play, but Mm -hmm. everybody starts with nothing, with whatever local community theater productions or school productions you've had. People don't come to Los Angeles and, you know, have three series regular roles and two Broadway shows and a tentpole movie under their belt. So you come from wherever you come from with whatever you have. We we can't expect you to have more than your life experiences allowed you to have. So the work is going to speak for itself. Mm -hmm. That's true. Mm -hmm. Bennard? Mm-hmm. Bennett. <laughs> Bennett. <laughs> Bennett Walton. I was going to do Bennett. Bernard, but okay, Bernard. Bernard. Bennett. So, obviously, you, you probably have to interact to a degree with you know uh, producers and directors and showrunners mm-hmm. and say, well, sure. we're, for this character, we're looking for, for this type, and for this character, we're looking for someone who's like this actor or this comedian. Mm-hmm. And um, Have you ever had a situation where you, you feel like you found the right person that doesn't necessarily fit the character archetype that the producer's are looking for, and you kind of advocate for them, or are you kind of, of beholden course. If I feel if I feel strongly about it, of course. But when when we go through the pre read process and and winnow it down to maybe six to eight people that we're going to take to producers, I want to take a variety of styles and performances into that producer so they that can, makes sense. so they can they see options. all the different ways this mm-hmm. role can be played. I don't want six or eight of the exact same. Yeah. Thing. Otherwise, what's the point in bringing six or eight people? Right. Yeah. That's fair. Absolutely. Now, I promised everybody that we were going to hear Alexa's uh, latest song, uh, Saved Boyfriend, and I had said about 530, uh, but it's a little a little after, but uh, mm-hmm. please, let's play, without further ado, this is Alexa Fair's latest single, Sweeping the Charts, at least when I do. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. 
shit you put me through. You, you, you. All the times I want to play. All the times I wish you'd say you, you, that you. The girl, the too sexy for her shirt girl here, Alexa Fair, <laughs> and you can go to yeah. SoundCloud.com. Uh, your song is also on. Yeah, um, my iTunes. song's on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, all that. Um, Alexa Fair, you can look me up. Yes. It's called Saved a Boyfriend, and lots more music coming up soon. Oh my god, you know, very uh, excited. Alexa was on my show as a guest last week, and then shortly after, I got um, an email from a producer who wanted her to audition for a feature film. They didn't know she yes. was acting. Whatever happened with that? Did you contact him? I met with him, <gasps> yes. and things are going really well. Um, we're going to have another meeting and then see where Good. it's going from there. Oh, but, yeah. Things are happening. You come on this show, who you knows? You never know. You're- you really <laughs> never know. I did not expect that at yeah, all. Yeah, well, that happens all the time. Yeah. I had a Japanese girl uh, on my show. Uh, she just came from Japan, That's and she had, she had two Twitter followers. By the end of the week, she had 19,000 Twitter wow. followers. That's crazy. From just from listening to my show, of course That's I did crazy. play it five times in one week, but I was just trying to help her out. I'm all about helping. I suppose next time I'm on the show, I'll have to bring you a clip from one of my stand-up shows. That's right. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's right. Ben Ben does uh, stand-up comedy, and he's a host. He hosts some of my yeah, events. Yeah, done some of your shindigs. Yes, he does. Uh, now, did you have some questions, uh, Ben, for Ty? Yes, I did, and I thought about them during the ah. Yes, I'm trying, I was trying to remember what it was. Now you mentioned before you were talking about representation being. Mm-hmm. Very important. Um, for someone who is like super, very much a novice, maybe they've done some training, but they're not sure how to go about getting that representation, what is a good like uh, starting process for that to kind of get your foot in that door? If you feel like you've trained enough and you're ready to actually pursue this professionally, then there are several agent and manager showcases throughout Los Angeles that is a good captive way to see, you know, 20 or 30 agents and managers in one sitting where you do a piece of prepared mm-hmm. material. At a them. workshop, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I think Truly Acting has the workshops as yeah. well. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and they do agent manager showcases, so that's a good way. Because the days of either passing out hard copy pick and res or emailing them, they just get... Well, sending people glitter bombs in the mail. Right. The, no, the nobody Tobias likes the glitter method, bomb. No. <laughs> What's a glitter bomb? Oh, oh so is, there's a... Uh, it was, do, you, do you remember Arrested Development, the old TV show? Yeah, on I Fox? didn't watch it, though. Well, that's that's your failing, and you can correct that because it's on Netflix. But, uh, <laughs> I'll put of, it on the list. One of the characters in that decides, uh, with no training and really no uh, impendence whatsoever, that he wants to be an actor, so he starts sending these little gift bags to a bunch of casting directors, and they're oh, literally no. glitter bombs. People open them, and they get... Mm. Yeah, I've heard of cookies, but not glitter work. bombs. Oh, no. That's kind of cray cray. I don't know about that. Mm. Now, uh, Ty, what should an actor look for before choosing a cast director workshop? Because there are literally tons of casting director workshops. I personally say that you should look at the casting director, look them up on IMDb, look at their credits, um, and do some research. Because uh, an actor ha- has very little money to begin with. If you're going to spend your money, make sure you choose a casting director that is reputable and also in the genre of um, that you're pursuing. If you want to be a soap opera star, you'd want to choose a casting director who focuses on that. Right, you want to... You Make sure that you're meeting people that cast shows that you are right for. Right. You know? Yeah. If you're, like, if you want to be a sitcom actor, then Then you want to make sure that they're doing, you know, multi and single camera half hour. Right. Don't just go to any casting director. Make sure that you... You want to target those that seem appropriate to what you're trying to pursue. Yeah. And now, for, um, for people who've never gone to a casting director workshop before, I know you briefly talked about what the process is, Mm -hmm. but... 
Um, I want to know, because I, I had a friend who had Signature Studios, which was a casting director workshop, and she brought all the top casting people mm-hmm. in. And what I found was that um, a lot of times they you get up there as an actor, you do your thing, and then they say, famous three lines, good job, thanks. Mm. But then sometimes they'll make a correction, right. but then they do good job, thanks. So what actually... What actually happens in your mind when an actor gets up there and uh, what can they do to make it memorable to you other than a good job thanks? Because an actor can feel when they say that that it's not really good job thanks. Well, we want to be supportive, too, and yeah. not tear anybody down in front of a group of people. Yeah. You, and you want them to do their best work. So you want to be encouraging. And if sometimes they hit it out of the park and it was yeah. really great and there's no need to give any notes or any right. redirection. Um, but actor feels like if you don't give make, give them a note that you actually didn't think they were good. But that's not true. I, no, not at all. I would say that that doesn't necessarily... I mean, I'm not casting director. Don't let me step on your shoes or anything. But I feel like uh, as someone who, who is also an actor, uh, I'm very insecure. So if someone doesn't give me notes, I feel like that's I've done mm-hmm. something wrong. But I, intellectually, I know that that's not necessarily the case, even if emotionally I feel like I need to stop by in and out on the way home and get 50 <laughs> Right, 50 double burgers. doubles. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think one of the things that people need to remember is that everyone who is in that room is working towards creating the best possible version of that character. Casting director, your goal is to make sure you get the right person with the right take on it. And as an actor auditioning, you're coming in with, okay, this is my take on this character. And mm-hmm. hopefully, you know, those two things mesh and you end up with something that works. Yeah, and God knows I can be wrong, you know. My vision, what I, what I perceive as being right for the role is not necessarily right all the time. It's like any job, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I want you to come in and show me all the different ways that it can be played. If I see 50 or 60 people in a day for a role, I want to see 50 or 60 different performances. What I end up seeing is, you know, 40... Two of the same performance and eight people that really knock it out of the park and impress me. Uh, what what was now this? You're going to have to dig here, Ty. Uh, actor that came in, did an audition, and you still to this day haven't forgotten it. What did they do? Well, I can tell you who it was. It was James Vanderbeek, and it's when he came in for Generation Kill. He became that character, mm-hmm. you know, in no uncertain terms, and and did. A level of work that just blew me away. Do you recommend? Now, I, I, I've heard cast directors say no, and then some say yes. Do you feel that if they have the material before an audition, should they come in character to do the audition? I mean, it depends on the actor if that's something that's really necessary to their process. Well, if they're method, they're coming in. They're coming in the homeless outfit, Ty, <laughs> with the smell and all. Yeah, they're going to get it. I don't need necessarily think that you need to go to that degree. If you're coming in for a lawyer wearing a coat and tie, I think it's a good idea as opposed to a wife beater and a pair of flip flops. Yeah. You know? But right. what if that's your take on the character? <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> then go for it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you can you can wardrobe yourself to suggest the character, but if you're coming in for a nurse, I don't expect you to come in in the white hat and the white dress and the orthopedic But if shoes. you did, would you think the person's weird? No, I would just think they were inexperienced. Oh. So it's a catch-22. If you come in and you feel that you want to dress for the character because it's going to help, that's if you're a more upper echelon actor, that that doesn't... I say come in, and the work will speak for itself. If you come in fully dressed and you do a magnificent audition, I'm not going to care. If you come in fully dressed and give a dreadful audition, I would say, oh, she just spent 100 bucks on an audition outfit. Mm. I feel bad for Mm. her or him. (sighs) Bought those heels for nothing, but I can write them off, honey. All right. (laughs) What is the worst thing an actor memorable that you remember from all the years that worst thing that an actor did and you don't have to name any names no name of course i don't remember her name but she pulled a gun out and put it to my head and i didn't (gasps) know if it was real or fake stop it that's too much that's too much right no was this for a movie or a movie oh my god that, was this in the 80s when the drugs were a little too generous? Oh, no, it was in the 90s. Oh, okay. <laughs> when the drugs were wearing off. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Did she force you to give up the part? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's true. Give me no, the part. No, I got her out of there as soon as I could. Did you, did you let security know that she... There was no, there's no security. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should have hired some security right. as a result of that audition. Yeah. And then she got a part on Blade Runner. <laughs> Let's not, let's not figure out who that is. Look, he's still thinking he doesn't. No, I... I... <laughs> Oh, so what is oh, now? I'm going to switch gears because uh, I got a lot of questions from your older folk. Now, of course, we've been talking about the young hotties like Alexa coming into town with That's her fine. stilettos. You don't, you don't need to mention my name. It's act, fine. Right? You know I'm young and hot. Right? It's fine. I'm good. I'm, I'm comfortable. Only one in the room. <laughs> <laughs> or the ginger. Or the gingers. The ginger. oh, wait a minute. I'm English and I'm coming here from England because See, why, England actors are taking. Over. Why do you? You don't even need me in the room. That's a flawless British accent. Oh God! No, I'm lying. Oh, you little! <laughs> I knew you were lying because you always tell me my British accent sucks. So I knew it. But we've had an influx of British actors, and I can see why because I not Australian. they British actors and Australian actors. I don't know what it is, Ty, but they are just incredible. Yeah, they're extremely magnificent. They're so professional and they're comedic timing. Not, nothing against my uh, Americans, but I'm telling you, if I were or casting Canadians. director or, <clears throat> or could, yeah, <laughs> I would only cast <laughs> British actors or Australian actors, like the girl in the hundred. I didn't even know she was Australian. Her accent is flawless, and it is hard to do an accent, as I well know from yes. Ben constantly reminding me. <laughs> my God. But uh, yeah, British actors, I, I, say, I don't know what the hell I was saying. What, where was it going, Ben? Because he can re- you, he repeats back. Uh, you were talking about oh, the older, older, the older yes, generation okay. of actors. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, what I wanted to ask is, we were talking about uh, most of this advice um, is going to it's going to go to a, a wide variety because I have worldwide listeners and I get a lot of emails from people who are in a job they're tired, Ty they're tired, they're worn down they got the saddlebags under their eyes and they want to be an actor they're like, I'm 40, I'm going to buy a Maserati and I'm going to become an actor um, how realistic is it for people that are transitioning from, say, CPA and they want to become an actor. Because you've got, uh, you know, Jessica Lang who can still rock parts and people who are over 40, like mm-hmm. tch, so many. But what about the little person who wants to be an actor and they're over 40? Let's be real. I think can it's it very tough. <sighs> I think that you have to do it for the love of the craft and for your passion for the craft. I don't mm-hmm. think you can expect to make a living at it necessarily. I mm-hmm. mean, there's certainly exceptions to every rule, and there are exceptions to that. But generally speaking, I think starting in the game at 40 with absolutely no training or having ever done anything, I think it's a very tough nut to crack. Mm. Now, there was a lady who was on ER, who uh, the African-American lady, who was a housewife, and she decided she didn't want to take anymore. She wasn't. There were no more. Um, what's that song by? Um, uh, what, she didn't want to cook any eggs anymore. There mm-hmm. were no bells to ring. <laughs> no bells. To, you know what song I'm talking about? D.I. Warwick song. You know what I mean? There were no more eggs being cooked. So she decided she was going to become an actress. Ended up ER. There so you go. There there's are, an exception to the rule. There's like a one wow. percent sure. that it can possibly happen. And if you start at forty, you might be able to get a part when you're a senior. You know, there's Maybe. still roles being sure. you know cast. Usually, they will go to the former stars. But there's a possibility, right? Absolutely. Now, I'm going to ask you to stretch, Ty. What advice would you give people who want it to pursue a career? They're forty. They're ready to go. That's it. I would say go for it, but you have to work harder than anybody else, you know, and you have to figure out a way to continue to support yourself financially while you're trying to do that. Mm. That never changes. Alimony. Yeah. Right. (laughs) Inheritance. (laughs) Alimony. (laughs) Work at the morgue. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, you have to really, really want it and work hard and and there's nothing wrong with starting out doing what i love background acting Mm -hmm. love it love it love it love it and what's great about that is you get to see the set you get to and learn what everybody does i think that's a really important thing people when they first come 
to town and want to see what a professional set really looks like and who does what, I think working in background can be very beneficial. Oh, it's lovely. I love it's it. fun. I, oh, it's lots of fun. Yeah, I mean, sort of both, we both worked on Glee, actually. We did. We did. Yeah, but it's different because I did a movie with David Schwimmer and Eric Stoltz. I met him at a party when Eric needed a fluffy person. He remembered me. Yeah, I haven't had that. that I was a teacher. Oh, yeah, people remember me. <laughs> For good or bad. No, usually good. But, um, yeah, that was a fun experience. Yeah. But uh, it's this, it's called show business. So please, please don't focus just on the craft. You have to learn about the business aspect. Am I right, Tom? Very true. What should actors know? What should they know from the business perspective? First of all, they need to know especially my 40-year-olds and up, social networking is a must. Now, of course, these young teens, Mm -hmm. like Alexa, 19, just turned 20, I believe, Mm -hmm. um, social media was with them while, you know, they were in the womb. They came out, social media, right? Not for me. Well, you're 19, so 19 what? years ago, did we have no, Facebook? I'm, no, I'm no. 20. Okay, so we, uh-uh. had, we had email. All right. But yeah. social media, you cannot survive without it. It has become the business card. Mm-hmm. Tell people, Ty, how important it is to promote uh, yourself with social media as an actor. I think what it can, can be you very do, important. too? Well, I think, you know, you, lots of actors send out postcards. When they're, you know, see me this week on Law and Order SVU at such and such a time on such and such a channel. You can use that in the same way by Facebook postings, Instagram postings, Twitter Twitter postings. Yeah, Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, the whole All those things, yeah. and you can hit a much So you accept broader... postcards. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Actors send postcards in all the I time. I made a postcard for myself, and, I'm, and I came up with this, because I'm very good at taglines and English. That's my thing. But I came up with this postcard tie, and it was a picture of me, and it said, um, it said, uh, big actors seeking small parts <laughs> or something. It was very clever. I may not be getting it, but it was very clever. Or That some, sounds very clever. Yeah, so you got to you know, make it something fun. <laughs> I will throw this bottle at you in one second. Um, <laughs> but uh, that is about it for today. We have to go. Ty Harmon, the one and only. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. Did you have a good time? I had a great time. Thanks You'll for having me. You'll think we're insane, right? <laughs> <laughs> Well, cray cray, and Alexa Fair, Alexa, AlexaFairMusic.com. Thank, thank you for coming yes, on thank the you show. Very much for having me. And BenPadden.net. Hey. Thank you for coming on the show. I think we got a lot of questions answered. We're going to ask uh, Ty Harmon to come back next year for your enjoyment. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in, and we will see you next week on Question Reality. Okay, bye bye. You're listening to Question Reality with Priscilla Leona right here on L.A. Talk Radio.